Hey everyone, welcome to another Lunch with Norm. I'm Norm Ferrar, and I got it mixed up. I said I would get this mixed up coming onto the podcast today. I just did it. But this is the Amazon FBA and e commerce podcast. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Lunch with Norm. Okay, but I'm not going to mess this up. On today's show, this is pretty exciting. I've been asking uh, this guest to come on for ages. So finally, he's here. And we're going to be talking to the or talk about the best ways to rank on Amazon in 2021. Our guest has served the Amazon community for over six plus years. And he's presently the Amazon subject matter expert at Canopy Management. And he was over at Six Leaf as a coup. CEO of Signalytics and acting as a consultant for many six, seven, and eight figure brands. Our guest today is Anthony Lee. Okay, so let's see. Kelsey, where are you, sir? Before we get to me, uh, we have a sponsorship. Is that correct? Oh, Kelsey, you know what? Hold it. Just where, how do I push you off the screen? Get out of here. Okay, <laughs> we do have a sponsorship today. And uh, today, our episode is sponsored by Ahrefs Webmaster Tools. So looking to become more than an Amazon seller? Start increasing your sales to your own website with the help of Ahrefs. With their very new and advanced free SEO tool, Ahrefs can help you launch inbound sales from your very own website with ease. Now, of course, this is why you sit back and relax with the Launch With Nord podcast, and take control of your business and check out Ahrefs Webmaster Tools at ahrefs.com slash A-W-T. That's A-H-R-E-F-S dot com slash A-W-T. Now, Kelsey, don't be annoying. Just come back on. There we go. All right. We're on track now. And uh, welcome, everyone. We got a big group already. Manny, Dawin, Simon, Dr. Cause, Jessica Rabbit, Mark, welcome to the show. Um, as you're tuning in, um, we hope you enjoy. Muhammad too from Pakistan. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the show. And uh, if you'd like to smash those like buttons right away, get those numbers up and uh, share it out to any friends um, who's interested in selling on Amazon, Ecom. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions over in the comment section as well. And we do have an incredible prize. Uh, I believe it takes four hours to combine or uh, put together this prize for you guys. So yeah, it uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But uh, if you are new to the show, you can head over to our Facebook group. That's Lunch with Norm, Amazon FBA, and e-commerce collective. I'll put the comment. Or I'll put the link over in the comment section. Also, if you're looking for any highlights or the full episodes, we are on episode like 180 right now. So uh, you can head on over to our YouTube channel, that's Norman Ferrar, or if you search Lunch with Norm, you'll be able to find that. But um, yeah, I believe that's everything. Welcome aways, Rad, and a Facebook user. I believe that might be Andrew, but um, it's going to be a good show and can't wait. All right. Well, thank you, Kelsey. There you go. You didn't stumble yeah. like I did at the beginning. <laughs> anyway, I said I would, right? But I came out and said, I'm going to mess this up. You jinxed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I jinxed myself. Anyways, this episode, if you're interested in ranking, if you're interested in learning on what makes you rank on Amazon, please tune in, invite more people. Like if you know other Amazon sellers, Anthony is not only an incredible influencer, but he's a brainiac. You know, when he brings out reports, I remember just reading uh, like really incredible in-depth reports uh, that, you know, about the al algorithm, about what to expect and how to just change and optimize your listing. So please, you know, bring people in uh, for this episode. It's going to be one that you're going to probably want to rewatch. So now I've uh, blown up Anthony's head a little bit. But uh, anyways, if you have any questions, uh, just throw them over to the right hand column. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, enjoy the show. Welcome, Mr. Lee. Hello. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good. I just want to say, because you said you've been trying to get me on this show for a while. Oh, I just come say on. That I've been, tr I wanted to be on this show. I remember when Lunch for Norm launched, and I was like, "That looks cool," and then I was like, "What do I got to do 
to be cool enough to get invited. Oh, and then right. at Prosper, you tell me, why why haven't you responded to the emails? It's like, I haven't gotten a single one. I don't know what magic folder all of them got sent to, but I didn't get them until we had that conversation. No lie. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, Kelsey's fairly incompetent, so you have to, you have to ask him. <laughs> oh, goodness. So, but anyways, okay, so we just what we've come to the decision is that we blame Kelsey. That's it. That's easy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So for those of us who don't know you, uh, can you tell us who you are and what you do? Okay. Uh, I'll give you the brief background. I've been um, in the space since 2014, started as a seller, and then very quickly ended up getting thrown consulting clients. Like literally I did not get them myself. A friend of mine was like, Hey, uh, you're pretty good at this. And I have friends that need help and I don't have time to help them. Here you go. Um, and then at the same time, I also helped, um, launch grow on blast, which later became six leaf worked there for six years. I moved on to helium 10, then signalytics helped them launch for a year. And then, uh, now I am the Amazon, I should say a, Amazon subject matter expert at Canopy Management. I say A because we also have Brian Johnson, who I think everybody's well aware is pretty expert at this stuff too. Oh, uh, Norm, I think something happened to your mic. You're uh, muted right now. Like there's maybe a connection problem. I'm so glad that wasn't my audio. I was really worried there for a <laughs> second. It's like, oh no. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, still nothing. I'm not sure what's going on. Can you sign? <laughs> there. Just a quick break. Um, okay, so if you guys have any questions for Anthony, just put them on over into the questions. Um, and we can do a little Q&A while we uh, figure this out. And yeah. Anthony, do you know any dances? I mean... I, I used to dance. I used to be a thing I did, but, you know, not so much anymore. You get older and your back starts hurting all the time. When you're picking up children constantly, uh, the dancing just becomes less and less. I get it. I understand. Do you really, though? Because you look kind of young. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I still have a couple of years to <laughs> dance away. But, um, yeah, Norm, how's your audio going? You, now you're on mute. So maybe if you change your Let's try audio, that. there we go. Perfect. Ooh. We're Ooh. back in action. Cause I want to see the awkwardness between you and Kelsey, you know, doing this whole podcast together. It's happened before, <laughs> by the way. Okay. So now, now I was going to say like the brainiac, Brian Johnson. That's what I started to say before my audio cut out. Okay. So a Anthony, you're, I've seen reports that you've put together. I mean, you're not only dipping your toe into this algorithm to understand it, you're jumping in with two feet. And I think that's something that we, I, I want to talk about is that what do people have to know? Like, what are some, what, what are some myths maybe that uh, are about this algorithm that you can straighten up? I mean, I don't know. It's like, it's so simple and complex at the same time. Right. Uh, it's really, it, it actually makes it kind of difficult to, to explain. But I think one of the biggest myths is uh, people, people have this misconception. I believe it's a misconception. Preface everything I say with, I don't work for a, the A9 team. So right, right. I, I can only work off of the years of testing and experimentation and study that I've done. But I believe that people have a misconception that like Amazon has this police force almost that looks at, you know, everything that you do in marketing and then um, immediately goes after anything that that looks suspicious, like they're monitoring it with real people. And then uh, you're, when your listings flagged or whatever, they look at, you know, the traffic and then if it looks weird, then you know, you'll get a listing suppression or possibly suspension. I think that a lot of people feel like that's what's going on. And in my experience, it's nothing like that. Like, yes, there are some triggers that will algorithmically, you know, send a red flag. And usually that red flag just leads to um, 
possibly worst case most of the time like a temporary uh listing suppression um but most of the time it's it it looks like a lot of the changes that have happened the changes right the things that we perceive as changes to uh the the algorithm or the way ranking works or the way promotions work most of the time it looks like it's not really a change what's happened is um the marketing community as a whole just kind of started acting different or consumers actually follow separate trends and start acting different and in that activity uh the behavior changes and it's not actually like some weird algorithm police force that's trying to make sure that you don't rank if you do this particular thing and i think that's that's probably the biggest misconception i see now we've got a mix of uh from beginner to advanced sellers uh that listen to our podcast can you explain the simplest let's start out there for the beginners best ways to rank your product right now for 2021 well i think the simplest is always sales right i mean that's like the way it works so um just to kind of break that down a little bit amazon's primary concern is the customer journey like they literally have a metric for this or a, a series of metrics for this um, and it's been alluded to in, in various like wikis that have been leaked from employees, et cetera. Uh, but essentially, uh, their primary concern is this customer journey. And in that, um, what they do want, they, they don't actually want manipulation. That's the reason why there's a there's a code of conduct. It, it was a term of service and now everything's code of conduct. But there's a segment that talks about not um, manipulating the search and browse experience and they mm -hmm. use the word experience purposefully because they are literally concerned about the customer journey from the, the beginning wherever they end up on amazon until you know they leave the site um and there's a bunch of different tracking metrics involved there where they'll follow it all the way up to add to cart and then they'll do some read and that that lends to their retargeting efforts and all kinds of stuff but anyway in the simplest terms um because that's their primary concern they want real buyers right so amazon's very very wary of um somebody that has a bunch of different accounts and they have strange buying patterns they mm -hmm. want real buyers regardless of whether or not they're there because of a promotion or what brought them there they just want bought people with a real buyer account that is attached to a non-fraudulent uh, payment method right so that's the first step they want the next step um, is, you know, they want them to have as close to like a natural organic process as possible, right? So whatever brings them into Amazon. Uh, while they're in Amazon, it just, what Amazon doesn't want is for this customer to be pulled away from what they're looking at because of, you know, some, some activity that they might not approve of, right? They just want it to be a natural experience. They want people to go look at a product if they want to look at more click on some links in the listing or go back to the search page and do a search and then they want that person to find what they're looking for add it to their cart believe it or not it feels like amazon's less concerned about them making the purchase then they definitely wanted to add it to the cart because that gives them the best data possible like yes now we have a customer profile we know this person likes this stuff and then leave the website happy so when you give Amazon what it wants, this is what helps ranking. So what it wants is natural activity throughout the website, and then ideally an add to cart and then some purchases. Um, and that's, they reward product, reward, I say reward. It's not, this isn't a purposeful action per se. Products that constantly come up in this natural activity and that end up in carts and that end up purchased more often than their surrounding immediate counterparts rank higher. So in the simplest terms, that is how you rank. You find a way to get people to your product in a natural looking environment and then consider strongly purchasing. So are you achieving that through search find buy campaigns or how do you achieve that? So if you want to manufacture that, um, there's a few different ways that you can do that. Um, 
I know that the most popular is this concept of search find buy, but that's not really the only way. Amazon also rewards external traffic. There's never been a better si signal for that than the most recent, um, I guess, uh, referral discount they're giving to people who have the Amazon attribution tag and can prove that they got the sale from an external source. Uh, so with that, you can do other things. Uh, run Google AdWords ads, for example. There are people that do that very successfully. Um, run other social media ads. Ad, ad, Google has a very robust way of targeting, and you might be able to actually um, get in front of potential buyers more effectively than on like Facebook or Snapchat. Uh, most of the time, the social platforms need an incentive. So that's when you can maybe run a discount or a buy one, get one. That's another thing you can do, though. You can run social media platform ads to an offer. A buy one, get one is uh, one of my favorites um, because it registers as a 200 percent uh, unit session. Mm -hmm. um, and that like conversion rate is a factor in all of this so that that makes those numbers look really good on amazon's end and then of course you know probably the the biggest shortcut that everybody's been doing for years now and it's funny because everybody always asks me what's the new way to make it work so there's not a new way it's been working for a couple of years now because it is the most effective way to simulate what amazon wants but that's these search find buy campaigns uh and that's essentially where usually that you connect an a, SFB with um, with rebates, right? Uh, so essentially what you're doing is you're telling people, you know, give our product a chance and we'll give you some or all of the money that you spent back. And then you route them to your product uh, through the main search bar. Um, it used to be a more effective than I think it is now. And that's because um, I just said Amazon's algorithm police doesn't exist. But part of the red flags that they build into that is they definitely know when a hundred percent search bar find product and purchase uh they definitely know that that's unnatural for the typical user so i think that that is going to at least you know trigger something and that's the reason why some people have found uh, less success with that uh, method recently uh so ultimately what the people i know that are very successful in amazon are doing is switching up the uh the traffic sources right so you have some people go search find buy and then you have others go through adwords you have others go through google there are like ways that you can manipulate the google link so that when they end up on the google page your product shows up first they click it the referring url is an organic google so you can have paid google organic google pinterest you know snapchat ads with uh with a percent discount and search find buy and to Amazon, what that looks like is that you are running advertising. You're a company that does advertising and you have multiple inputs. And when the buyer comes through, it looks natural. Some buyers, hey, they're only there because you gave them an incentive. That's cool to some degree. As long as that's not 100 percent of everything you're selling, Amazon doesn't care. That's that's cool. And then some of them looks like they got there naturally. And then some of them go through Amazon PPC, which Amazon loves, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, are you doing like with your search find buy, are you driving people to competitors uh, as well? Like you're asking them, hey, can you check out this? Uh, click over, do this and then go over and check mine or vice versa. Go over, check mine, add it to cart. OK, and then go and check out a competitor, then go and buy. Could you give them very specific or is it just very simple instructions? So everybody does this part differently. So mm -hmm. for starters, this is an advanced tactic, most right. definitely. And all the people I know that are advanced sellers, they do a form of this. Everybody does it differently. My personal method, um, I call it the, uh, the Amazon choice method because sometimes it leads to an Amazon choice badge. But basically, I'll run people through what I call a survey, right? So they get to this part in my funnel and it says, hey, look, we just have a couple of really quick questions, a couple, a, a simple survey that, you know, it would really help us out. This is, we're doing market research. And essentially what, what I ask them is go to search for this keyword, go to Amazon, search for this keyword, 
click any three listings that catch your eye. It doesn't matter what three they are. And then, and, but look at, actually look at the listing, like look at what you would normally look at, pay attention to what you would normally pay attention to. And when you are done with those three listings, come back here and we have some questions specifically about you, what you remember from those listings. So I prompt them to go to any three, and then I prompt them to spend some time on it so that they can answer the questions. Then when they come back, the questions are really simple. You know, um, it's, uh, did you notice if they had more than one image? Um, did you notice how many reviews they had and what the star rating was? Um, you know, did you click on that because of the price? If so, what, you know, stuff like that. So easy questions they should be able to remember. Mm -hmm. And what this prompts people to do is go to your competitor. This is actually how the documentation that I've read on how Amazon Choice is uh, chosen uh, works. Um, basically, it's based on keyword and it, and it tracks all the way up to the add to cart. And essentially, if people end up visiting multiple listings and then one wins the add to cart, this is a point towards, okay, well, Amazon choice. Um, so that's what this simulates. It gets people to look at uh, competitor listings, not just click on and click off, but click on, scroll, and then come to your listing, add it to the cart, and then some of them will purchase. That's, that's, that's how I do it. And you don't want to make this, and this is what I've heard. <laughs> Sorry, I told you I cough. Uh, you don't want to make it so simple um that they just click 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 yeah, that is the big red flag if, if people are seeing that you're going in you're looking at a keyword you're going you're adding to cart and buying the product all within about 15 seconds it's not natural right yeah so yeah. that's what we're trying to do when anthony's talking about that it's just breaking down the process and when you take a look at weight and I'm not an expert in A9. I think I know a little bit about, I learn a lot from you uh, about it, but um, where they wait, a lot of it is like you said, on the add to cart, which is really surprising to me. So let's talk about like the, the weight and nobody knows for sure, but as of like right now, what do you think are the most important points? So you've got add to cart, what would be next? So obviously purchase, right? Yep. Um, I mean, but it gets confusing to people sometimes that like, wait a minute, this purchase not as important as add to cart. The only reason that we think that is if you actually look at the documentation on how Amazon Choice is uh, chosen, you see, and that's not just Amazon Choice, but there are other things too, other badges, other things. It always ends at add to cart. And then you're wondering, okay, well, if it ends at add to cart, then that means that for, for purchases, this particular metric doesn't, purchases don't matter. And that keeps coming up and you're like, wow, it really does seem like add to cart is, is the most important metric to Amazon. There's probably reasons behind that, but outside of purchase and add to cart, um, because purchase is the thing that impacts conversion the most and conversion is in itself a, a relevance metric. So I would say they're probably about as equally as important just because of that. Outside of those two, um, on page SEO is really important, right? Your title. Your, so your actually your category is the end all be all right your your little category um, keyword that determines what subcategory you know what okay, category so tree you live in. Can I interrupt you on that? Mm -hmm. Are you like for your category? Uh, let's say you're in in baby products. You're trying to drill down to the the um, the absolute specific niche in in the for the category or do you want to be a little bit broader so you can capture more people if you're talking about choosing like what what in what context like, okay what so you, you, you want to get into the right category okay so, if you're talking about choosing a category correct when you choose a category you want to get as close to the the drill down niche as possible and the reason why is because your category actually uh determine man it determines so many things but mm -hmm. one of the most important is it determines what keywords you're even allowed your listing can even be relevant for and i know at first glance you might think something broader is better but if if you're at a broad if you're at a broader if you can niche down more but you're at a broader uh, level subcategory what happens is 
there's a set of keywords that you can be relevant for that have nothing to do with your product that even if you rank for, you'll never convert for. You don't want that to happen. You want conversions to actually happen. And the best way to ensure that is to make sure that you pick the subcategory that is the most appropriate so that the keywords that your listing is allowed to even be relevant for are also keywords that will ideally end up converting to a sale. That is going to help you in your ranking efforts far more than having uh, broader keywords, but a lot of them not being so relevant. Okay, very good. And sorry, I interrupted. So you were talking about the category being like very important. Yeah, it's very important because it determines what what you can be relevant for. It In some instances, it even determines what is allowed to index for your listing. I learned this um, through an interesting exchange once. I used to have a, a, multi, a kitchen multi-tool. It was both a can opener and a bottle opener. But because of the category, the way it was set up, I could only be in one or the other. And if I was in one, my, my listing wouldn't even index for the other. And I followed up with people from the captive team and was like, why is this happening? And that's when I learned about, you know, how uh, relevance is determined. So the, the category is definitely important. Uh, because it determines what's relevant. And after that, I would say, um, probably the it's just like any SEO, the headline, the title is going to be incredibly important to the spiders. However, obviously, from a buyer's perspective, because you're talking to both robots and humans, um, the main image is probably the most important because the main image is going to directly impact your um, conversions a lot more sessions, a lot more because they're speaking to humans. But as far as the spiders are concerned, the title is like the first place it goes after category and decides this is what the product is, right? You just told me that it belongs in this category. Now I got to look at the title and figure out, you know, like what relevant is in there. And so um, the weighting, and, and when we talk about weighting, something needs to be understood. We're not talking about rank weight because rank weight isn't a thing. We're talking about relevance rate, weight, because relevance is what determines rankability. Right. So relevance weight would be, I would, I would put a bunch of importance on the title next. Okay. Now we forgot to mention the uh, giveaway today. It's a great giveaway. Uh, do you want to just uh, tell everybody about what you're going to be providing? Sure. Um, so for a lucky winner, uh, we will give a, um, a growth analysis. So basically we have some, uh, strategists that work for canopy literally they um ask for um integration with your mws and then go into your account and like spend four or five hours putting together essentially a growth presentation to show you like this is where your opportunities lie this is where we think you should be you know diverting budget for ppc these are the other opportunities you're not currently taking advantage of you know, this is where your sessions are and uh, you stand, you know, based on other people in your category, you could probably do better with uh, unit session percentage here and here. These are our recommendations for how to fix that. So it's it's really robust. So it, it's not something that's just you push a button and you you spit out a report. You guys are going no. right into it. No, this so, is a manual process. <laughs> so we're talking about four or five hours that they'll spend on your account to check out your growth and um, you'll have a full audit at the end. So if you're interested in that, and as you can tell, like uh, Simon says here, Anthony really knows his onions. I have no idea what that means. I think I know what that means. Uh, you like your veggies, uh, Anthony? I, actually, I do. Um, oh, very good. I don't know so, if I'm an onion expert, though. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm Simon big on is. Beets. beets. Oh, okay. All right. That's my so opinion. that's the other thing that you're an expert in. All right. So if you think uh, Anthony knows his onions, then just put in hashtag Wheel of Kelsey or Beats. And if you're looking for a second entry, just tag two people, either within this uh, podcast or outside and get them, get them over here. All right. So let's go back to this. Trends. Trends for 2020 or 2020, where you see going Did into 2022. A, a year? I know. <laughs> I'm an old guy. I can, you know, I could say 1995 and you would just, you would just say something like this, right? Just shake your head. Yeah. Agree. Cause I'm an old guy. I can say anything. I hide my own Easter eggs. So <laughs> anyway, 
<laughs> okay, so let's talk about trends. What do you see going into 2022? Oh man, I've actually done uh, had pretty extensive conversations with uh, colleagues at Canopy about trends. Um, as it pertains, okay, so for starters, as it pertains to the algorithm, I don't really see a whole lot of changes based on the way that we currently operate. And here's why. If you go to amazon.science, all of the research papers on essentially how their team looks at, you know, building out this robust um, search algorithm, uh, they all live there. If you type in A9 or uh, rank algorithm relevance, you'll notice that any paper that mentions those things, pretty much they had like one hasn't been published since 2018. But if you look from 2018 until present, everything is about voice. It's all about Alexa. It's all about voice search, everything that they're working on. So as far as the way we operate from the perspective of like running promotions and trying to rank, I don't see a lot of change because that's not the focus right now. But what we will see is more opportunities for uh, voice um, shopping, for voice ranking. I have no doubt that that's going to become more and more of a thing because it looks like everything is really focused on, on that right now. What that means for what Amazon's working on beyond that, I have no idea. Like I can only assume that more cooler advanced Alexa machines are coming out. And they'll do more than what the current ones do with the little display screen, mini tablets or whatever. Um, but uh, but yeah, so all of the, the current development seems to be focused on that. Uh, with regard to market trends, so one thing that everybody needs to keep in mind, because I, I know that we have a lot of people who've only been in the game for an, a year or less. Mm -hmm. They got to experience probably six months ago everything being amazing. And then all of a sudden ads are really expensive sales are down rankings fluctuating they're like what's going on uh to that i want to uh remind everybody that everything's cyclical uh this isn't just a market correction with uh, ad costs either literally the sentiment of the buyers as a whole change so what we're seeing right now is an influx of gen z getting to the age where they can afford to buy stuff uh, and uh, younger millennials. As such, the trends change. Uh, we're seeing a larger buying population, right? Because Gen Z populations actually, and, uh, and young millennials populations are actually bigger than us Gen X and baby boomers like you, Norm. Um, so we have a larger buying pool. Uh, they have less discretionary income, but um, they're more technical savvy. Right. So you're going to see more online buying, possibly the trends of luxury and premium items might change. I, I, I don't know enough about that specifically to speak on that. Uh, that's just based on what I know about the discretionary income. Uh, but we're definitely going to see uh, trendy items. We'll see more of those happen. And I mean, we've already seen it. If you spend any time on TikTok, you see some items that were just normal, regular things all of a sudden explode for no reason. And they're doing you know, 10,000 units in two days. Um, so you'll see more and more of that happening because there's more social stuff. We'll see uh, live streaming uh, e-commerce become more robust. So for those of you who are, who are hesitant to do posts or do Amazon live stream, these are things that will, Amazon's not stupid. They know these are things that will actually become more beneficial in the future as more and more people kind of adopt them. Uh, we'll see capabilities on other social media platforms to open up purchases on external platforms. But TikTok already does this overseas. They'll eventually do it here. Uh, Instagram kind of already has that. Uh, it's limited, though, to the catalog and your website. Eventually, they might even open it up for Amazon sellers. I wouldn't doubt it. You'll see I think Amazon will adopt buy now, pay later options uh, because that's getting huge again, because we have a larger population of online savvy buyers with less discretionary money. Uh, so 
that I rattled off a whole bunch there. That hopefully that that helps. That that's fantastic. Great list. <clears throat> okay, I've got only a couple more questions. One of the um, issues right now is inventory and balancing that out. So we're not going to get into that. But what happens if you are restricted or you run out of inventory? People worry about their rank plummeting right away. Can we talk about that? And if you're going, if you're going out of inventory, do you lower your price, raise your price, keep it at the same, the same price? Do you let it just go out of inventory? And when do you have to panic? So here's the pro the problem is, is everybody that's had experience with this has had different stories to tell. You'll hear people that say, yeah, I go out of stock. I've gone out of stock three or four times and every time I've bounced right back. And then you hear others say every time I've gone out of stock, I've lost rank almost seemingly, you know, permanently. Um, for starters, as far as how you handle it, because of other rules, not inventory, but other rules around the buy box, it is not good to play around with your with your price. Amazon wants consistency. Um, they want you to offer the best price possible. If you lower your price, that's good, but then they don't want you to raise it back again because if you try, you'll lose your buy box. Mm -hmm. um, if you raise your price and you slow down sales, Amazon doesn't really like that because then it's suddenly, well, this was a better deal than it is now. Why? And, um, you know, you could, I mean, your rank will suffer before you ever run out of stock. And then it's like, well, you know, that would have happened anyway. Could you, could, can you get it back still? So I definitely don't think playing around with price is important. I think um, what you should do is just let it run out of stock naturally and then just do better in the future with inventory planning. Um, most people, I don't think that there is a, such a thing as you lose rank permanently and you can't ever get it back. I think that it can be harder. Um, I think if something like that's happening, that's because something broke in your categorization, uh, something changed, something shifted, suddenly um, keywords you were relevant for, you can't be relevant for anymore. This is my pro tip for people, though. Uh, and this is actually going to I'm going to go in depth on this in a piece that I'm writing about. So Danny McMillan did that big piece about how the A9 algorithm works based on the joy of ranking. He gave me all his research and now I'm expounding upon it. I will be publishing something. But one of the key findings I found is, and I'll explain why this is, one of the problems that people have with rank spikes and sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, is because everybody's trying to rank from the homepage. And there's too much noise from other categories that are interfering with that. So right off the bat, I'll tell you, I don't know what's going to happen if you run out of stock. I don't know how long you can be out of stock before that starts changing. But I do know that when you get back, whatever promotion methods you use to get back on rank, do it in your category. Stop sending everybody to the homepage. That is not how you do it. You stand to lose too much because there's too much external noise that you don't have any control of. So in category ranking is what you want to focus on. That should help you get to where you need to be faster. It's going to reestablish your relevance for your keywords. Um, and ideally, it won't matter how long you're out of stock. Uh, you can't get over the hump of that negative that, okay, well, this product isn't always in stock like we'd like it to be, uh, but at least you can compensate for all the rest uh, by doing it right, by you know cranking up your PPC and then focusing on in-category uh, rank. Very good. Okay, so before we get to the, uh, the questions, I uh, just wanted to remind everybody for that really great audit, listing audit, uh, just hashtag Wheel of Kelsey or tag two people and you'll get a second entry. All right, Kels, do we have any questions? I'm sure we do. Oh, yeah, we got lots of questions. Uh, so we only have about 15 minutes. Yep. But uh, we'll try to get through as many as possible. Uh, from Andrew, Anthony, what are your favorite e-com tools and why? Favorite e-com tools? Um... Well, uh, so obviously I'm biased here, but uh, since working at Canopy Management, I have played around with PPC Scope and I like it because it's an optimization tool rather than an automation tool. And automation is not for everybody. Uh, I like to have more control over everything. I like stuff that helps me um, optimize what I'm doing as opposed to giving control to something else. Uh, so on PPC front, uh, I like that. As far as research and all that stuff, 
Um, you know, I think the standby has always been helium 10. Uh, I do, however, see like some tools come out with cool features and I'm like, oh, but ultimately for the most bang for your buck, if you want to get the stuff that does 80% of what you need, I would say, you know, helium 10, um, then most of the other tools that I use are like external marketing. I love, uh, chat bots, many chat for Facebook, but I hate Facebook. So if I'm trying to do stuff outside of Facebook, I've been playing around with jot form for, um, smart, uh, smart forms, smart surveys and things like that, uh, running Snapchat ads to it. And then, uh, I've never smart- done that. I, that's a, that's news to me. I have no idea. I'll have to talk to you a bit more about that. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's cool. You know, it's not as back and forth real time as a chatbot. I do also like uh, uh, web-based chatbots. Um, right now, I'm using Instabot.io, uh, but I'm going to probably switch to Builderall just because to get kind of the technical part of it, uh, when you're doing a web-based chatbot, you don't want people to have to click that stupid little icon in the bottom right corner before they can talk to you. And those two platforms actually open directly into the bot. And then um, I really want to start playing more with SMS marketing. And I think uh, Mobile Monkey has gives you the ability to create an SMS bot, which I'm really excited about doing, uh, where like literally people respond via SMS and then you can program the responses and it's all done through text. So nice. I, I noticed, uh, Kelsey, before we get to the next question, there was a, comp- a bunch that came in and said, can you explain about uh, the <clears throat> the category marketing? Like, what did you mean? I, I forget. I saw Jahar saying something, and somebody underneath him talking about uh, what do you mean by uh, going to the home page? And then Arthur says, "What is category ranking, Anthony?" When you send, when you do search find by, almost everybody always sends people to the Amazon homepage. That is the homepage. As such, you are competing with all of the noise happening on that page, which is going to be for multiple products in multiple categories. So if you're trying to rank your product, your product's going to be in a specific category, but, and, and, and your product only needs to meet these metrics to win, but on the homepage, you're also competing with an adjacent category where you need these metrics to win, right? And you have less control over that. There's a bunch of noise. So instead of sending people to the homepage, send them to the category page, send them to, if you're a baby, send them to baby, have people search through baby. Don't have them search from the homepage in category means that you're and this, this, this also applies to your, your, um, like any URL structures. Like sometimes people will do, uh, like amazon.com is the URL. I think Pixelfy has that option, right? Don't send them to the homepage, Uh, send them to a category page. You can even send it to a subcategory page, but send them somewhere where the category of that your product exists in is like the tree. The tree has them going into the category system. That way your keyword, um, the keyword rank juice goes into that category as opposed to into all categories. And then it's competing with all this other. Noise. That's such a great tip. So hopefully Arthur, Jahar, you you uh, uh, you got that. Okay, next. Okay, uh, from Manny, a new competitor just launched a product that looks almost like mine, and I also have a second product ready to launch. Uh, do you have any ideas for that special situation? I'm I'm afraid I don't really understand what the special situation is, other than the new competition the, the competition that has a product which is like yours. This is a age old problem of differentiation. Um, so something, one of the best tips that I think I've ever gotten uh, from, uh, with regard to differentiation was actually probably from my buddy, Alex Hudetan. Um, essentially what he teaches his students is, uh, you know, rather than trying to worry about like making the widget work differently, um, just design some really crazy, awesome looking packaging, and then you'll stand out. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to do that, you should, if you're, if it's too late, 
then you're just going to have to get really creative with your listing optimization. If you want to stand out from your competitor that looks just like you, you're, you're going to have to get really creative with your listing optimization. Make your images somehow different, showcase different ways that the product can be in use uh, just to stand out. Um, yeah. And as far as your second product ready to launch, like, I don't really, you know, launch it. Put a bunch of money into PPC. Do some, yeah. do some promotions. Get it on page one, and, and then start your dominance early. Okay, great. Uh, from Mohammed, what are your thoughts about doing a strong ATC in the beginning, like first five days? So, I don't typically run add to cart campaigns like in a silo by themselves, um, just because during like a honeymoon period, they seem to work and then they seem to stop working if uh, there isn't a healthy ratio of purchases. Um, I think that you should run them concurrent with something that's going to get you purchases. Uh, in which case then, yes, any promotions you do in the first five days is critical because that's the easiest time for you to just blow your relevance out the water and then you can rank really easily for a lot of important keywords. Um, hopefully that answers your question. All right. Okay, great. Uh, from Simon, do you have any uh, top tips for running successful Google ads to drive the external traffic? I am not a Google ads expert, so I'm afraid I don't have any specific strategy tips. I just know of people like, um, for anybody that might've caught it, the, the virtual billion dollar seller summit. Uh, Casey Goss actually went out there and was like, yeah, we've been running Google ads this whole time in ranking. Uh, so I know that there are people who are very successful who are doing it. Um, and, and from what I hear, ad costs are lower because Google ads stopped being in vogue. So pretty much nobody does it anymore. And, uh, and it's working so well because one thing that a lot of people don't realize, Amazon really cares about Google traffic, like really cares about Google traffic. And they also specifically state in their wikis that they want listings to convert from Google traffic. One of the easiest ways to make that happen is by running Google AdWords ads because those ads are intended for a buying audience to then click, go to your listing and convert. Um, so if the rumors I'm hearing is that most sellers are not doing this right now because it's not like the hot thing, uh, then that means the competition's low uh the clicks don't cost as much and you're getting conversions and that would explain why uh it's also helping rank okay great uh from jack lee in the product title does the first word hold more weight than the last few words uh algorithmically i do not believe so uh but it'll have an impact only because that's the you're talking about the portion that all browsers all brow browsers, not like computer browser, but like a shopper, all shopping browsers will see versus the part that they don't see because it's truncated. Uh, so like the spiders don't care where in the title it is. All they care about is how close together the words uh, in a phrase are. But buyers will care about the first words more than the last words because they see the first. Is it still uh, 15 words apart? What? Uh, like the algorithm will be more kind to the, the keywords that are picked up within 15 words of each other. That, okay. So I actually have never heard it drill down that far. And if somebody proved that, that's awesome. But uh, yeah, essentially the closer the words are together, the, 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 so what happens is over time, all of the words in your listing will find a combination but the farther apart they are, the longer the stitching together of those phrases will take, right? It's almost like the algorithm is cycling through them and then testing uh, relevance as it goes. The closer they are together, the, the, the less, you know, the faster it'll get to cycle through, which is the reason why uh, Bradley's Maldives um, honeymoon method works so well, because he's basically having you in the honeymoon period, turn around and keep your phrase intact in the title immediately the spiders pick up on it boom it's all together we don't have to stitch anything together test the relevance during the period and time in which it's easiest to get relevance and then bam we can rank so 
so yeah, the closer together they are, the more powerful it'll be in the short term. Now, a year from now, you'll probably be ranked relevant. The only problem with that is the 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 phrases that it took longer to stitch together uh, means that um, it took longer for any traffic to go to them. So uh, if it's low traffic and then low conversion because it's low traffic, you might not gain the relevance that you get from high traffic and conversions. So okay. Okay, uh, we'll just do maybe one more question and start wrapping things up. Uh, from Shahid, uh, how does ad rank impact cost per click? Ad rank, like you're not talking about organic rank, but you're talking about where you rank in your ads. I don't know that that is what impacts cost per click. I think ad rank is impacted by your bid and then as a byproduct of where the traffic is coming from, how many impressions you get and what percentage of those impressions decide they want to click. That is what impacts cost per click. Um, so yeah, obviously just like organic, the higher up you can rank in your ads, the more traffic you'll get, the more impressions you'll get, likely the more conversions you'll get and your cost per click will go down as long as a people who click on it like your product. Now, if you have That's a crap product, key. <laughs> yeah, if you have a crap product and you don't convert, then your cost per click is going to continue to go up and it'll be harder and harder for you to actually maintain that top position in ad rank. Right. But if you have a good product and you're there, then you reap the benefits of such. Okay, so that wraps it up for questions. Anthony, you're in for a treat. I don't think you've ever experienced the Wheel of Kelsey. I haven't. Okay, we'll I'll try to do this very quick and uh, wrap things up. And here we go. It's time for the Wheel of Kelsey. All right, wow. so that is <laughs> wheel of yep. That's what I've, we get a lot of. I was just transported to like the days when I was playing Nintendo Contra or something. <laughs> that was that was awesome, by the way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, so here's our wheel. Um, if you are the winner, please contact me at k at lunchwithnorm.com and I will arrange everything and get you your prize for the audit today. Here we go. You got to sing or something, Kels. A wheel of Kelsey. Okay, it looks like S Green from YouTube. So, YouTuber S Green, email me k at lunchwithnorm.com and I'll get you your prize with Anthony and uh, Canopy Management. All, All right. right. That I know good. Anthony has to get yep. going soon. So, look, we, we even have about a minute and a half to spare, Anthony. How's that? That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Hey, no problem. How do people get a hold of you? Um, I think the easiest way is social media, Anthony Lee 991. And that's the handle everywhere. Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Snapchat. Everywhere. Anthony Lee 991. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Anthony, thank you for being on. You were awesome. You dropped a bunch of information today. I love it. We're going to have you on again for sure. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. All right. We'll see you later. And now you got time for your call. Yep. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that today. I told you that Anthony would be dropping a lot of information on us. Uh, all right. So we have on Friday, uh, Taylor Boone. She's going to be talking about some photography and how to create your brand story using pictures. Uh, now, I guess, because Kelsey doesn't have to remind me, I'd like to give a big thank you to our sponsor, Global Wired uh, Advisors, a leading digital investment bank focused on optimizing the business sales process. For more information, please contact Chris and his team over at globalwiredadvisors.com. Where are you, Kelsey? All right. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, joining today's episode. It was great seeing everyone and uh, really loved it. I think there's a bunch of really great tips happening today. Yeah. Um, let me see. So uh, if you're new to the show, you can go ahead and still smash those like buttons. It really helps uh, 
boost our reach on social media. Also, if you want to follow us, we're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, we have got our Facebook group, a Lunch with Norm, Amazon, FBA, and e-commerce collective. So head on over there if you want to be part of the community. That's where you can ask questions, uh, talk to other Beard Nation members. And let me see if you're interested in more of the beard. Uh, you can check out, uh, check out our membership program that is our Patreon account. So if you're looking for guest lessons, um, Q&A sessions with Norm, Q&A sessions with me, free SOPs, and much, much more, uh, head on over to our Lunch with Norm website, lunchwithnorm.com, and just click on the membership. That's the easiest way to do it. And uh, we had a really great session yesterday with our Platinum members. Um, we talked about a whole bunch of stuff like product discovery through PLs and uh, customer avatars and how to find them. Um, so yeah, really great. And I think that's about it. I think we covered everything. Um, thank you all of our new watchers. We're, we're noticing more and more people uh, that we don't usually recognize coming on here. So we just wanna give you guys all a big shout out um, thank you so much for being a part of our community and we hope you enjoyed. And if you have any recommendations for guests in the future, um, put them in the comment sections. You can always email me at k at lunchwithnorm.com too. Um, we're always looking to get you the guests that you guys want to hear from too. So uh, there's always that. Okay, you done? Yep. All right. All right, so join us every <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Poor Kelsey. And thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know, we, we love this community. We're seeing it grow. And we've got, like Kelsey said, I saw a whole bunch of new users on there, our listeners on there. Please join our group and get involved. We love engagement. We love providing content. And uh, anyways, thank you for being part of our group. And we'll talk to you soon. Lunch with the lunch with the lunch with